Hey, I haven't given up on this series. I believe it's been seven months since the last installment of Stupid News. I don't know, I think it was February the last time I uploaded one of these videos, but I am too lazy to check. All that matters now is I am back on the grind, or at least for now, until this series goes on yet another, like, eight-month hiatus. But whatever, again, I am doing one now, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> Anyways, I have some doozies here for you today. I have some stories here today that'll highlight how depressing, awful, and just flat-out fucking stupid this world can be. Let's kick off Stupid News of August 2021, and also the second Stupid News video of 2021. And this will probably surely be the last Stupid News video of 2021, because I seem to only make two of these videos a year. But anyways, let's begin, shall we? OnlyFans reverses explicit content ban after outcry. OnlyFans says it has suspended a plan to ban sexually specific content material following an outcry from its creators and advocates for intercourse employees. The subscription website stated in a ready assertion Wednesday that the deliberate ban was not required on account of banking companions assurances that only fans can assist all genres of creators and decline to reply to additional questions. Only fans had stated Thursday that it could ban specific material beginning October 1st, blaming insurance policies of banks and fee processors for the coverage change. The brand new guidelines are essential to adjust to the necessities of those monetary establishments and are the one approach to assist make sure the long-term sustainability of OnlyFans. I'm sorry for the broken English, that's just the way the article was written. Surely a bot wrote this, I don't know. OnlyFans has grown to be well known as a spot the place intercourse employees can receive a commission in a safer approach in addition to an area for celebrities to work together with followers. Final week's abrupt change upset the location's creators, lots of whom threatened to maneuver to a different website. Lots of intercourse employees joined OnlyFans in the course of the pandemic when in-person venues shut down or turned extra harmful due to COVID-19. The positioning has, tremendous, has been tremendously profitable for some individuals, permitting them to earn hundreds each month. OnlyFans says it has 130 million customers and a couple of million creators who have collected earned five billion. Now the stupid part of this is not only fans deciding to reverse this decision of course that's the good part. The stupid part of this is the fact that they were even going to do this in the first place. Only fans realized that if they were to get rid of sexually explicit content from their website that would pretty much be internet suicide because let's face it everyone went to only fans for that kind of content. I watched, a, I watched a video by Adosa Buckley just a few weeks before OnlyFans announced that they wanted to ban sexually explicit content off their platform, and he took a look at the social media pages for OnlyFans, and they were always promoting people who were not posting sexually explicit content, like a guy stuffing his face with a bunch of food, nothing sexually explicit about that, or a woman doing yoga, not naked yoga, just normal yoga, you know, shit that you could easily watch on YouTube free of charge. Want to know what you can't get on YouTube free of charge? porn. And that was the big draw for OnlyFans, and Buckley was pretty much making fun of the fact that OnlyFans really wants to sweep under the rug that they host a lot of pornography on their website. They wanted to seem like this legit, good and clean website, and it just didn't work. He looked at the comments under a bunch of their posts promoting these non-NSFW content creators on their website, and it was just filled with OnlyFans girls promoting their sexually explicit profiles. Everyone sees behind the curtain. They know what your website is known for. No matter how much you try to push your non-NSFW content creators, you will always be known as that website that hosts porn. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm so tired of the stigma surrounding sex work in this country and really in this world in general. So much lack of empathy for the sex workers on OnlyFans who made a good amount of money from the content they posted onto there and people were saying things like the OnlyFans girls need to find real jobs now like is what they're not is what they're doing already not a real job there is obviously demand for the kind of content that they make and they were supplying that demand that's pretty much the quota for what constitutes as a quote-unquote real job sex work is work 
plain and simple. I don't give a fuck what you have to say. I am so tired of this Puritan society that we live in. I've seen people jump for joy over this under the justification that porn can rot the mind. Porn can have a really unhealthy effect on the brain. And to an extent, I can agree because it happened to me. I've talked at length in the past how porn has negatively impacted my life, and I have been trying my damnedest to stay away from it for a while now, but here's the difference between me and these kinds of people. I don't shame sex workers. I can understand that they're simply fulfilling a supply for a demand, and it's not their fault whatsoever if porn has a negative impact on my life or the lives of anyone else, because... What the fuck have they done, aside from, you know, just supply the demand? Nothing. If one becomes addicted to porn and it begins to negatively impact their life like it did with me, that is completely on the fault of the consumer and not the porn stars. People can get severely addicted to video games, but there's no massive push to ban that because we understand that it is not the fault of video game developers if a person gets very addicted to playing their games. There is massive demand for video games, and the developers are simply supplying that demand. This is not rocket science, but oh wait, we live in a massively Puritan society, and there's no stigma surrounding video games like there is porn. Guess what, Puritans? Humans like to see other humans naked. <gasps> Shocker, I know, but that's just the way society is and will always be, because it is human nature to be attracted to such things. Can we stop denying it finally? We are in the year 2021, not 1953. Wrong inmate released from Randolph County Jail. Deputies are searching for a mobily woman who was wrongly released from the Randolph County Jail over the weekend. Randolph County Sheriff Aaron Wilson said jail employees accidentally released 24-year-old Ellen R. Goble instead of another female inmate. Sheriff Wilson said the two women got permission to switch cells and employees might not have properly documented it. So when one female inmate got called for release, it was actually Goble who came down. The sheriff said newer employees were working at the time who were not familiar with the inmates. He said the two women have identical descriptions from their height and weight to their eye color and hair color. If you can put the two pictures together, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference, but it's still inexcusable, Sheriff Wilson said. He said Goble even signed the other inmate's name and knew other personal details about her. He said Goble committed fraud to escape. Goble was in jail on multiple charges, including resisting arrest, burglary, drug possession, and operating a vehicle without a valid license. When asked about the security of the jail, Sheriff Wilson said, our jail is very secure. This was an isolated incident, and we have taken every security precaution to make sure it doesn't happen again. I just love that this is talked about like it's some little oopsie. Like, yeah, we know we released a potentially dangerous woman from our jail, but we won't do it again. We promise we're looking for her. <laughs> like a fucking five-year-old who got caught stealing cookies from the cookie jar. And look at the woman in the picture. This is her. This is the woman that was accidentally released. Look at that shit eating grin. She knows she lucked out big time. I don't have much to say about the story besides this is very hilarious. Not only is the prison system in this country deeply corrupt, it is also deeply incompetent. Did you not do any additional verification to make sure that this woman is in fact the woman that is supposed to be released? Like have her recite this woman's social security number or her current address or anything of the sort. Deeply personal things that only the woman that is supposed to be released would know. This is just embarrassing all around and if anything bad happens as a result of this woman being released that is entirely on the jail but they will be absolved of any wrongdoings because alas our justice system is deeply deeply corrupt what a country we live in. Veteran dies of treatable illness as COVID fills hospital beds, leaving doctors playing musical chairs. When U.S. Army veteran Daniel Wilkinson started feeling sick last week, he went to the hospital in Bellevue, Texas, outside Houston. His health problem wasn't related to COVID-19, but Wilkinson needed advanced care. And with the coronavirus filling up intensive care beds, he couldn't get it in time to save his life. He loved his country, his mother Michelle Pudgett told CBS this morning. He served two deployments in Afghanistan 
Afghanistan, came home with a purple heart, and it was a gallstone that took him out. Last Saturday, Wilkinson's mother rushed him to Belleville Medical Center, just three doors down from their home. Belleville Emergency Room physician Dr. Hassan Kukli treated Wilkinson and discovered that he had gallstone pancreatitis, something the Belleville Hospital wasn't equipped to treat. I do labs on him, I get labs, and the labs come back, and I'm on the computer, and I have one of those oh crap moments. If that stone doesn't spontaneously come out and doesn't resolve itself, that fluid just builds up, backs up into the liver, backs up into the pancreas, and starts to shut down those organs. His blood work even showed that his kidneys were shutting down. Kukli told Begnaud that his patient was dying right in front of him. Wilkinson needed a higher level of care, but with hospitals across Texas and much of the South overwhelmed with COVID patients, there was no place for him. Kukli recalled making multiple phone calls to other facilities, only to get a lot of sorry, sorry, sorry in reply. Places had the specialist to do the procedure, but because of how sick he was, Wilkinson needed intensive care, and they didn't have an ICU bed to put him in. Then I'm at my computer, I'm just like scratching my head, and I get this thought in my head, I'm like, what if I put this on Facebook or something, maybe somebody can help out. One doctor messaged me, said, hey, I'm in Missouri, last time I checked, we have ICU beds, we can do this, call this number. The next guy messages me, he's a GI specialist, he goes, I'm in Austin, I can do this procedure, get him over. I said, okay, great, let's go. He texts me back five minutes later, I'm sorry, I can't get it administrative approval to accept him. We're full. I hope this is concrete proof enough that all these anti-vaxxer, anti-masker, supposed freedom-loving patriots are not actually patriots, and they don't give a fuck about freedom. All they care about is advancing American supremacy, and these people are nationalists. You hear these people harp on about how much they love the troops, how much they appreciate what the troops have done for this country, but when a troop dies from a preventable disease because hospitals beds are full and no doctors can treat them because they're so backlogged with COVID patients, you hear crickets from these kinds of people. Almost like them talking about their supposed reverence for veterans is just a virtue signal. These people just use the aesthetics of American patriotism to advance their awful, awful beliefs and to make their awful, awful beliefs seem more palatable to many people in this country. And unfortunately, it works. It fucking works. And I am so tired of it. And this story just shows how full of shit these kinds of people really are, and I hope more people in the future see behind the curtain. And it is this mindset that you're a freedom-loving patriot if you disobey mask mandates, if you don't take the vaccine, and that is why we are seeing such an overflow of COVID patients in, uh, in the ICU, especially in the South, and that led to this man dying a totally preventable death had the appropriate resources been available to him. When are people going to get a fucking grip? COVID is serious, and you need to take the proper precautions against COVID to not only protect yourselves, but protect those around you. And the faster more people do that, the faster we can get back to some semblance of normalcy. I sound like a broken record because I've made this exact point in several other videos in the past, and here I am again making this exact point, but it bears repeating because so many people just do not listen. So many people just do not take this seriously, and thus we are seeing another spike in COVID. We are seeing things like the Delta variants. We are seeing more people die of COVID than ever before because so many people are stupid fucking dipshits and don't want to take the proper precautions against COVID. They don't want to take the vaccine. They don't want to wear a mask. They don't want to do all this. Meanwhile, they whine about things not being normal, like not being able to walk into a store without a mask on. Well, guess what? The faster you help combat against this virus, the faster things can get back to normal, hopefully. The more people not doing their part, the less likely we'll not see this shit end and I hate that because I want COVID to be fucking gone. I want this virus to be fucking eradicated because I hate this way of life but I understand if I want this way of life to end I need to do my part. I need to take the vaccine. I need to wear a mask. I need to do this. I need to do that and so many of these people are just petulant little children. They don't want to do their part because they don't like wearing a mask. They don't trust the vaccine. Grow the fuck up already. You are the very people halting us from getting back to normalcy. You know, the normalcy that you crave oh so much.
I'm so fucking sick of these people. And I, and I know this is not going to be the last time I rant about these kinds of people. Because so long as COVID is a problem, these people will continue to be a problem. And these people are the very people uh, making this problem continue even further. I'm fucking done here. You people are not patriots. You people let this veteran fucking die from a preventable illness. Alright, for real now, I'm done. A couple got arrested for assaulting each other with... Spaghetti. They say never order spaghetti on a date, but not usually because your date might spill on you. A couple in Clearwater, Florida, of fucking course, was sitting down for a spaghetti dinner Thursday night, or technically Friday morning. It was a late dinner around 1 a.m. 45-year-old Stephanie Lanas and 35-year-old Adolfo Rivera had both been drinking. They started arguing and it eventually turned into a food fight. We don't know who instigated it, but they both ended up mashing a plate of spaghetti into each other's face. Someone called the police and they were still covered in spaghetti when the cops showed up. Now both of them are facing charges for domestic battery. Stephanie also got arrested in October for stabbing Odolfo in the arm during another drunken fight. Can all domestic violence just go down like this? That actually sounds really horrible out of context, I'm sorry, but no. What I mean is, if your partner pisses you off, instead of inflicting violence upon them, just throw some food at them. And they can throw some food at you back, and it just turns into a huge joke. It may even be so fucking absurd and hilarious that you might even forget what you were even mad about in the first place. I'm a genius, I should be a marriage counselor. I finally found my calling in life after all these years. About time. <laughs> Joking aside, don't throw food at people. Just throwing that out there in case anyone takes my quote-unquote advice, literally. And they may even face legal charges following what they did, and they may try to pin the blame on me and say, Hey, this obscure YouTube commentator told me to do this, so it's not entirely my fault he influenced me, and I'd rather not go through... A headache like that but <laughs> anyways I will still retain the notion that this is much preferable to inflicting actual bodily harm on a person though too bad this couple didn't just engage in food fights when they were angry at each other because the article obviously stated that Stephanie stabbed Rodolfo last October Guess they're out of spaghetti then. Anti-mask New York Post requires all of its employees to wear masks and lay a sign of Murdoch media hypocrisy. The New York Post, the Rupert Murdoch-owned tabloid that has peddled a high volume of anti-mask rhetoric during the pandemic, informed employees this month they are required to wear a mask while at the office, according to a memo obtained by CNN Business. Masks are required while walking the floor slash not at your desk. Sean Giancola, publisher and chief executive of the tabloid, told staff in an August 12th memo. The formal guidance attached to Giancola's memo said employees must mask up and cover their face when away from their desk or chatting with colleagues. The New York Post mask mandate is the latest example of the brazen hypocrisy in Murdoch's media empire. Murdoch's media organizations, such as Fox News and The Post, have disparaged public health officials and the guidance they issue about vaccines and masks, but these media organizations have quietly required their employees to follow the very same health protocols that they've lampooned in print and on air. The right-wing tabloid, for instance, has repeatedly questioned mask mandates and asserted they are not necessary, particularly for vaccinated people. When the CDC said in July that it was recommending vaccinated people to wear masks in areas with substantial and high community transmission of COVID-19, the Post called it madness. This is yet another thing that really pisses me off about the anti-mask, anti-vax hysteria and rhetoric that is so popular in this country. So many of the people who peddle this bullshit know that they are peddling bullshit, but they just play into the stupid talking points that a lot of their audience ascribes to because they know their audience will eat it up like the lapdogs they are. Because they know they make a lot of money spreading these awful and not based in reality at all talking points, so many people are dying of COVID-19. So many people are dying, and they probably wouldn't have died if they were to take proper precaution against COVID-19. Like what I talked about earlier, so many of these idiots buy into these talking points. They, it places distrust of the vaccine and mandates in the minds of these people. They don't follow said mandates, they don't take the vaccine, and thus they end up spreading COVID and possibly dying from COVID. Or spreading COVID to another person who wouldn't have obviously died if they weren't to get COVID, and they, they wouldn't have gotten COVID if they weren't around stupid anti-mask, anti-vax dipshits who 
completely disregard the health and safety of themselves and those around them. These people would much rather listen to right-wing political pundits and GOP politicians rather than actual health officials. It's really scary that so many people in this country would rather listen to those kinds of people rather than the voices of the people who actually know the most about this virus. You may say this goes a bit too far, but I'm pretty confident in saying that so many of these pundits, so many of these politicians who are spreading anti-vax, anti-mask rhetoric, placing distrust in the actual ways to combat against this virus in the minds of so many people in this country are just downright evil. I actually feel that they are at least partially responsible for so many of the COVID deaths in this country. You see in a lot of the southern areas where, you know, a lot of these anti-mask, anti-vax people live, COVID cases are fucking skyrocketing. The Delta variant is absolutely devastating to areas like these. So many people's lives are being cut short right now because they're listening to anti-science bullshit artists. Or they're around people who listen to anti-science bullshit artists and they caught COVID-19 and then they spread it to another person and that person dies as a result of catching COVID-19 from said stupid person. So many people have initially said they're not going to take the vaccine until the FDA approves the vaccine. The FDA approves the Pfizer vaccine. The FDA is barred out by Big Pharma. We can't trust the FDA. It's so hilarious seeing these people continuously shift the goalpost, and now they're taking ivermectin, horse dewormer, in an attempt to prevent themselves from getting COVID-19. Yeah, like, that's actually gonna fucking work. Taking animal medicine. Then you see grifters like Jimmy Dore and Joe Rogan prop up this ivermectin bullshit. You see Joe Rogan saying he literally caught COVID-19, and then he took ivermectin, and he felt so much better. I'm willing to bet he didn't actually take ivermectin. He's just playing into the bullshit that is, he knows his audience will eat up. I've heard while he was publicly on his podcast trying to write off the pandemic as not a big deal. He was actually freaking out about it, constantly sanitizing himself behind the scenes, always making sure his studio was spotless because he was so paranoid about catching the virus. So I find it very hard to believe that a guy like that would actually take ivermectin. He knows where his audience is at. He knows if he peddled that kind of bullshit, his audience would eat it up, and thus he peddled that bullshit. And I'm willing to bet the same exact thing for a lot of these political pundits and politicians who spew anti-mask, anti-vax rhetoric. A lot of these people are probably vaccinated, they probably wear masks, they just say whatever they know their audience is going to eat up and thus generate the most money out of them. That's all this is at the end of the day. One mask massive grift, and I really wish more people would know that this is just a grift, but so many people have fallen for these awful talking points, hook, line, and sinker, and thus it has really poisoned the minds of so many people in this country, and has resulted in so many completely unnecessary deaths in this country. And that's exactly why I think these people at the forefront peddling this bullshit are just downright fucking evil. Don't like it? Sorry, not sorry. And so that concludes the August of 2021 edition of Stupid News. More like depressing news this time around, but I tried to balance things out with that Florida couple food fight story, so yeah. When will I do another one of these? I don't fucking know, because this series has never had a set schedule. It could be a month from now, could be two months from now, six months, maybe a year, I don't know. Whenever I feel like a doing uh, whenever I feel like doing another one of these, really. As I'm sure I've stated previously to ad nauseum, I am a very lazy video maker. Five to seven minute rant videos are in my wheelhouse, and making 20 plus minute videos where I read articles and give my thoughts is just a little bit too much effort for me, even though these videos require like bare minimum effort, but still a tad bit more effort than just making those five minute videos that only take me like 20 minutes, but yeah, <laughs> that really is a testament to how lazy of a person I am, whatever. Anyway, if you have a stupid news story that you would like me to see, feel free to either hit me up on Twitter or share it in my Discord server. I have a channel in my Discord server completely dedicated to stupid news stories, and who knows, maybe a submission of yours could make it in one of these videos. Who knows? Both are linked in the description. And for now, that's all the stupid news I had to cover. Bye bye